Hi, my name is Suyang Lee and I'm a dual title PhD candidate in English and Women's Gender and Sexuality Studies at Penn State. The first chapter of my dissertation is titled Interments Elsewhere, Agential Adjacencies in Patricia Grace's Chappie and Christine Piper's After Darkness. This is the opening of my larger dissertation project called Imagining Elsewhere, Speculating the Asian Diaspora in North America, Australia, and New Zealand, which looks at places connected by the commonality of past anti-Asian legislation, significant Asian populations, strong economic and political interests in the Asia-Pacific region, and settler colonialism. My broader project asks how understandings of the Asian diaspora might be reconfigured around effective experiences, temporary affiliations, or non-human entanglements, imagining alternative groupings of conversations from traditional categories of knowledge and cultural production based on geography or the nation state, and decentering the centrality of American experiences and representations of the Asian diaspora in the West that affect anti-Asian racism and Asian Anglophone identities globally. Interments Elsewhere looks at two novels, Patricia Grace's Chappie and Christine Piper's After Darkness, which tell stories of Japanese civilian interments during World War II in Aotearoa, New Zealand and Australia respectively, and are the only novels to date about these interments. I describe these internments as elsewhere, as less known, written, and theorized about in comparison to places like the US and Canada, where the growth of Asian American and Asian Canadian movements, literature, and scholarship have already produced significant engagement with the wartime incarceration of Japanese as a part of the national and cultural histories. In contrast to Carolyn Chung Simpson's description of Japanese American incarcerations as an absent presence, I argue that these internments elsewhere are both unseen and unfelt in their national histories, characterized by a present absence that is the amplified absence of historical records, first hand accounts, memorialization, fictional retellings, and subsequent scholarship for a combination of the following reasons. One, significantly fewer numbers of those interned, with many internees detained in these countries actually rounded up from other very specific islands at the request of Allied powers, making them difficult to call national histories, to the deportation of most internees, leaving few living survivors or direct descendants to push for national recognition, memorialization, or reparation, and three, the complexities of indigenous settler relations in these countries, such as the argument that official apologies should be considered exclusive to the indigenous Maori in Aotearoa, New Zealand, which forecloses formal apology and reparations such as those already extended in North America. In thinking about how to talk about these events characterized by absences, I draw inspirations from Saidiya Hartman's concept of critical fabulation, which is a practice of speculative storytelling through the rearrangement and reimagination of snippets of the archive that highlights the impossibility of narration without assuming to give voice to the victims, which risks romanticizing their experiences and enacting further violence. Building on critical fabulation, I argue the concept of agential adjacencies helps address how to talk about these interments elsewhere, which can only seem to be talked about through really Related and parallel examples such as Japanese American and Japanese Canadian incarcerations. I argue that using not only imagined but contiguous stories and sources, despite the possible danger of talking over or speaking for others, can be a practice that preserves the agency and distinctness of the thing or subject being diffusely described. While being centered is usually associated with visibility and agency, I argue the position of adjacency can also be used for these ends. As developed throughout the chapter, agential adjacencies is first a critical and cross-disciplinary practice that looks across divisions of academic scholarship while respecting their distinctions, such as using Asian American scholarship to think about Asian Australia and Asian Aotearoa New Zealand issues. I argue Asian American scholarship and the studies of other Anglophone Asian diasporas are and should critically embrace being adjacent, even as such adjacencies should not become conflations. Second, adjacent adjacencies is a narrative strategy. Adjacent adjacencies is deployed by imagining stories and perspectives of those peripheral to the victims to further emphasize the difficulty of representation and our inability to truly give a voice to the historically silent. As my analysis of Chappie and After Darkness show, both novels decenter interments and their victims, accepting but highlighting the unknowable aspects of these histories by weaving together geographically or thematically adjacent histories and characters to understand them, looking to indigenous disposition across the Pacific or Japanese imperialism in Asia. Finally, while contemplating on Hartman's suggestion that stories may be the only kind of reparations available for certain historical wounds, I argue agential adjacencies offers a glimpse into an alternative practice of claiming redress. In understanding adjacencies as a practice of imagining alternate relations and proximities, I also examine actions toward or close to restoration that do not rely on the power of the former perpetrator and traditional enactments of political agency. The Tetela character of Chappie, for example, demonstrates agential adjacencies by returning home to his adopted Maori family in Aotearoa, New Zealand, after his deportation by entering as an American citizen, establishing a peace garden that out 
Lewison and financially provides for his family more than official apologies or one-time compensations could. As a character like Chappie and both the novel show through their narrative approaches, a strategic positioning of roundaboutness and directness and elsewhereness can help reclaim agency and show the proximities between these multiple histories and injustices that emerge from interconnected if incommensurable structures of racism and colonialism. <laughs>